Do you run your own freelance business? Or maybe you're thinking about picking up some business on the side. Well, then you need FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the quickest and easiest way to get invoices out to your clients. It's easy to use. It works anywhere, available from any device, uh, on the desktop, iPhone, iPad, Android, and all of your data is backed up and secure. And it makes it really easy to get organized and get paid. You'll be tracking time, logging expenses, and invoicing your clients in no time. You can also save time billing, freeing up several days per month to focus on the work that you love, and you get paid faster. FreshBooks customers are paid on average five days faster because there's a link on the invoice that says pay me now. And it's a great way to grow your business. Plus, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day trial. That's right, 30-day trial if you try them out. So go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Once again, for a 30-day trial, go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another My Angular Story. This week, we're talking to Tomek Solkowski. You want to say hi? Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Tomek. I'm uh, uh, calling to you from Poland. Nice. Now, uh, we had you on Adventures in Angular not that long ago. Do you want to just give a brief introduction, and then we'll tell people where to find that episode? Yeah, sure. So I'm an Angular developer. I'm working with Californian-based company Nplug, and we are doing this digital signage apps. We're using Angular for, for that. I'm also front-end trainer, so mostly in, in Europe and Poland. Most of the times so I'm doing Angular, but not only uh, workshops with Sagas. Awesome. And uh, you were on episode 191. We talked about yes. UX in Angular. Yeah, I think like three, four, uh, or well, maybe more episodes ago right now. Yeah, we, we yeah. did. Yeah, it was about five weeks ago, six weeks ago. That would be it. All right. Well, let's dive in and talk about you and your experience, what you've done. <laughs> let's start with how you got into programming. How did you get into programming? Sure. So I, I'm actually not sure what's part my initial interest but it was way down in primary school i i just i think i just probably found or borrowed a, a book on on pascal language mm -hmm. so i remember distinctly that i've actually so i i don't remember how i started but i remember like writing rewriting something like 400 lines of code just from the book you know and trying to I compiled it for like a weekend or something. Then I didn't know a language then, and I'm not even talking Pascal, but even English. So I couldn't figure out what they were talking about. <laughs> so yeah, I I've just wrote a whole bunch of code and it didn't work. I asked my teacher to help me and he actually made me realize that I'm using colons everywhere that semicolons <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was like then backspace colon that's backspace semicolon backspace semicolon for for <laughs> for a solid hour or so yeah so for a couple of months later we were just geeking out with my friends and you know switching these tips and wow, oh, I can make the color, the, the color of the text change or something like this. So it was pretty, pretty ran random. And then I think several years later, we had the actual, like in, in the secondary school, uh, we, we had a logo language. Mm -hmm. Notice this turtle <laughs> graphics that you move the turtle around and it's, it's uh, yeah, a bit programming, a bit like geometry and something like this. So it was also fun. And yeah, so for, for actually for the longest time, I, I didn't really know which direction to go. It, it, if I should actually go, go into like more arts or more like mathematics or, or programming. So I was considering like, you know, architecture. <laughs> I was going to a music school for, yeah, like primary and secondary as well. I ended up in in 
uh, IT university, but mostly because most of my friends <laughs> from mm -hmm. my uh, school also went there. So it was just, well, might as well. <laughs> yeah, so yep. that, that was a start and yeah. Interesting. So did you graduate then with a degree in computer science? Yeah, I actually had a, a bit of trouble graduating because I was I, in the same time I was finishing the the music school. So it's it's you know either one is not a simple task, and if you combine them, <laughs> then mm -hmm. then it's it's almost like uh, yeah, it's it's pretty nerve wracking and uh, pretty impossible. But I end up ended up graduating after some time. And in the meantime, I started doing some uh, freelance job, like, you know, all over the place, full stack, even with designing, you know, banners and, and so mm -hmm. on. But from, you know, like this design part to configuring servers, everything, everything a bit. So it's, I, now I think it's, it's good to have such an experience, you know, to know the full extent of, of technologies that we uh, that our front end is uh, is working with but not too much you know not to stay in that in that you know uh, every everything you're in that place where you just know everything uh, just a little bit right. instead of you know specializing yep yeah my experience is that it's, it's worth specializing but yeah you, it, it is good to know a little bit of how everything goes together. So how did you get into JavaScript then? Because my experience is that most universities and stuff don't teach you JavaScript. I mean, they might now, yeah. I guess, but when I went to school, my, they didn't. Yeah, my mine didn't as well. I, I was doing Java and, you know, like <laughs> SQL on, on, on paper, <laughs> even I remember like this, this. Uh, tests when you wrote SQL on paper. That's this was <laughs> insane. But yeah, no JavaScript. I think I, I just started doing JavaScript because I needed it for you know to make my HTML and CSS more you know alive. And mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing HTML and CSS because of that you know a, a bit a, a small direction toward art. I was you know still split between uh, be between technology and art and. HTML and the CSS and like this front end technologies are, is actually something that is quite directly between those those topics, right? Especially when you when you try to figure out and design things yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think it was like the the next thing after you know the basics of of HTML and and CSS. That makes sense. I. I personally, you know, I got into Ruby and I never really liked JavaScript <laughs> until I, they started putting out the frameworks and it was like, oh, okay, this kind of makes sense now. Uh huh. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting, you know, it was like, oh, okay, out of necessity, I kind of learned it. So what drew you to Inkether then? Yeah, I, I actually, I, I think that that was, well, I actually know that that was a, a big chance that, that, that I, like just, just by chance, I, I stumbled upon it. I, I, I think I had to write something a bit more complex and I didn't want to use just, uh, you know, like mm -hmm. prototype at this time, I think, <laughs> or jQuery. Uh, so I was, I was looking into Angular and Ember because that was actually the time where they were about the same uh, at the same popularity i think right. it was probably like something angular 1.1 1. 1 maybe so i was i was trying to to pick the winner <laughs> in this race and it was 50-50 so but i i did pick angular then i i got like a month later i think i got an offer for a job where where they wanted an angular uh, specialist so yeah I, I right. of course I applied <laughs> and yeah and and that was about the time when angular became also popular so so I I just went with it uh, for for the most part and to be honest I didn't really even knew I didn't know the, the JavaScript all that well at that time but I starting I started by being quite good with with angular and just you know ending up with like some basic questions about about javascript and trying mm -hmm. 
keep up with with the basics. Cool. So what have you done in Angular that you're most proud of? Well, I, I think most most of my professional Angular work has been for, for the companies that I've been uh, working with. And uh, that was actually when I started learning more and more not only Angular, but also JavaScript and, and teaching. And recently I, I, I decided to, that I do have something to, to comp- contribute a bit, a bit more. So I'm doing a lot of workshops right now, but I also, you know, try to work in that, you know, area when, which is not that incredibly complex, but can be made easier for, for developers. So like sometimes there is like this, simple or maybe yeah, I, I try not to use a, a word simple but sometimes you can just see a new perspective on a problem and it can it can like trigger understanding of of, of like something something more useful so i'm i'm trying to, to to provide my perspective to some something some things that i feel like they are a bit more more complex but they are very useful for for even a, a beginner developers so i'm i'm writing articles uh, and doing a, a lot of recently a lot of like this small tips on on twitter just you know to because there are some things that for example of for typescript that you you just you know use the basic typing and you don't know that there are those really cool features of the language so like i try to put them out there and I, yeah that's that's the main uh, my main calling like <laughs> if you could say so uh, i recently started toying with the with uh, schem- angular schematics as well mm. because this is something that yeah that's actually so- I, I i really love it but it's it is quite complex at this part at this point so i feel like this can be or sh- and should be more easy. And I think Angular team will make it easier, easier right. in, in following months. But yeah, uh, right now, for example, I'm working on schematics for Angular Playground. Uh, hmm. Do you know the project? Uh, yeah, I think I've seen it before. Mm-hmm. Because it's it's one of those tools that are really useful, but a lot of develop- developers don't use it i feel like because it's a bit a bit of work to set up and this mm-hmm. is really the, the place where schematics shine right so right now you can you will be able to to write just ng add playground and you already have this all set up uh, on your in your project and you can just write your sandboxes for for components that's basically what right. this project is about so yeah, I, I I think once I finish that, uh, I basically already have this working, but I, I need to clean it up and made a pull request. Uh, I, I plan to really reach out to other other open source projects and maybe help them with schematics. So actually, for the listeners, if if you have such a project and you want to integrate it with schematics, I would really be up to to help. So reach out. Awesome. Now, do you run Angular Playground or is that somebody else's? No, no, that's some, who does it? I bet it's, it's someone who you probably even know personally, but yeah, I, I, I blanked right now, so I don't remember. But I, yeah, no, yeah, I, I'm just. Yeah, yeah it's Justin, Justin Schwarzenberger who mm-hmm. does Angular Air. And then there are a few other folks here that I don't know. Mm. Yeah, but I'm like a heavy user of, of this. So I, I felt like I, yeah, this is the first place I would really like to contribute to give right. give back to, to them, right? No, that makes sense. I actually started also uh, talking with, with the Storybook uh, project, which is a uh-huh. similar thing, but for mostly for React. It's also supposed to work with Angular, but I haven't tried that extensively yet. But they could also, you know, benefit from Angular from schematics, and I, I think I, I, I will be also trying to actually use it for for <laughs> React projects, maybe, because you know schematics is, can be used outside of Angular, and that could be 
good for setting up other like plugins, let's say, mm -hmm. or other tooling for for different languages. Yep. So, is there anything else you're working on now? Other than you know trying to produce some content <laughs> and the uh, schematics thing, not very much. Oh, but uh, recently I just well, I'm this is actually work in progress. To be honest, I just totally forgot it about it, even though I just put it last week. It's I've put an Angular developer uh, developer roadmap. You might have seen something similar to into like just developer or front-end back-end developer or roadmap for 2018 and something like this that just collects you know all the ideas all the technologies or the projects that that uh, you sh should or probably will want to get acquaint acquainted with well if you want to be like a pr proper <laughs> or if you want to write your front-end or back-end projects properly so there's recently one of my colleague published something for like this for uh, for react and i've noticed that there is no such roadmap for for angular so i've put it out there it's on a github so and you can look 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 it up it's angular developer roadmap yeah and so if you look it up just this see what's what's not there yet uh, mm -hmm. yeah and write me some some issues and so on because i i feel like this yeah this is the very much work in progress but it, it can develop into something something bigger and which can be presented as a like yeah general roadmap for for developers that are just starting starting up with angular sounds good all right. Well, the last part of this show is picks. Do you have some things you want to shout out about? For you, the listeners of My Angular Story, Loot Crate is offering an opportunity to save 10% on any new subscription at lootcrate.com. Just enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Loot Crate is one of my favorite things. Every month I get a box in the mail, costs less than $20, and it comes with all kinds of goodies. I have stuff from just looking at my shelf, Batman, Spider-Man, Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and much, much more. So if you're a geek, a gamer, anything like that, and you want cool stuff to put around your office, uh, cool t-shirts, comic books, etc., then definitely check out Loot Crate. To save 10% on your new subscription, go to lootcrate.com slash ruby. Again, that's lootcrate.com slash ruby to save 10% on any new subscription. Enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Yes, I have like two workflow tips and one life uh, work balance tip. So the first uh, workflow part is uh, if your you know, OS clipboard hold only one holds only one thing you are really missing out so really look uh, for a clipboard manager uh, in in for your either windows or or uh, mac or linux uh, i'm working on mac so i'm using this a plugin for uh, alfred app and it basically what what it does it, it uh, keeps everything that i copy other than passwords, <laughs> but everything that I copy for up to three months and I have a fuzzy search for it. So I can, you know, just copy several things, then go to a different app and, or email and paste it in like different uh, order and something and so on. So it's extremely useful. Once you get used to it, you, it like a single item clipboard makes no sense. So that's the first one. The second one is desktop documentation app called the Dash app for Mac or mm -hmm. Zeal Docs or v Velocity documentation. Uh, there's the second alternative for Windows or, or Linux. So Zeal Docs or Velocity. And it basically allows you to, to download 
specific uh, documentations for for specific technologies and it's not only limited to front end can can download it for java for dotnet and so on and it's not only is faster than looking it up uh, you know online but it's also yeah it, it it really downloads it so it's it working it works offline so you can you know basically work without an internet for for just for you know looking up things in in specific languages and frameworks yeah so i i don't basically i cannot remember a lot of things so so i'm using it several times a day usually even for like basics like javascript or, or angular and the I've third it before it's, yeah. it's actually really nice which one uh dash yeah dash yeah it also has a like a snippets uh, library and so on so it's it's super useful and the third tip actually present pretty recent one so i was yeah, I had a lot of work the last couple of weeks and I was pretty stressed out and I couldn't afford in that that month really to to go on vacation to to you know to to chill out and and, mm -hmm. and so on. So I got back to to playing uh, instru musical instruments. So my tip is to if you have like a need to just go go get away from from you know coding for like 15 minutes or so really invest in in some in some musical instruments you don't have to spend a lot of money and you know like buy a percussion set or something just you know like try harmonica which really like you can you, you don't need any the previous like ed musical and edu education uh, to 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 do it you you uh, i guarantee that after like hour all or two you you will be able to play something that will make you feel good <laughs> yeah so yeah i i recently was considering buying an, an iphone and i actually I, I was considering the you know the iphone x uh, mm -hmm. which is like a thousand bucks but it's it's crazy so instead i bought the the cheapest one iphone se and for the rest of the money uh, i bought a piano <laughs> so <Nice>. yeah <laughs> so and it's really it's it really changes how how the day uh, goes by you know if once you you found yourself you know too too stressed or just want to get away from from this and you know the weather is not good for running or something play something mm -hmm. yeah that that sounds excellent i i have to say that i'm not that musically talented but sometimes just the change of pace and the change of thought process is helpful mm, yeah yeah so uh my change of pace and my change of thought process is usually working on my car or my house or my yard or something like that so you know i i tend to just go fix stuff or build stuff or things like that. And so for my picks, I'm going to talk a little bit about working in my yard. So Home Depot does tool rentals, which is nice because I don't always own all the tools I need for stuff. So, you know, I've, I've rented like floor sanders for wood floors and things like that. Uh, the most recent thing I did, I rented a tiller and uh, I use it on my yard. And so I tilled up most of my yard. We had killed all the grass. And that was just because uh, I had been fighting the battle between the weeds and the grass for like eight years since we lived in this house. And it's just the, the weeds were finally winning. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. So I just gave up and killed all the grass and started over. So yeah, tilled it all up. Tomorrow I'm going to be working on the sprinklers and things like that. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to kind of get a little bit of a break. And so yeah, so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, shout out about that few other things that I want to shout out about Joe Eames, who's on the Adventures in Angular panel, is putting together the Framework Summit. If you go to frameworksummit.com, you can check it out. I'm going to be speaking briefly about Stimulus JS, which is, I don't know if I'd call it a framework. It, it, it is kind of a framework, but it's really, really, really lightweight. And it's put together by Basecamp, who are the folks that do Ruby on Rails. And yeah, so I'll be talking about that at the conference. So yeah, if you want to come up to Park City, Utah, which incidentally is also where they hold like Sundance Film Festival and things like that. It's also where the U.S. Olympic team goes to train in the, for the Winter Olympics. 
then then definitely come out and it'll be fun to hang out. Um, it'll be in the fall. It's in October. And uh, October is just a beautiful time to be up in Park City. So you won't regret it that way. But apparently they're having a bunch of folks from the Angular team, React team, Vue team. I think Tom Dale from the Ember team's coming. A bunch of other folks from a lot of the other frameworks are going to be there. And I think all of those folks are getting together for a couple of days before the conference without attendees and just kind of cross-pollinating ideas, which should be really interesting and cool. And then they're having the conference. So anyway, definitely check that out. And then I will also be at a few other conferences. I'll just throw those out as well. I am very likely going to be at Microsoft Connect. I've, I've been invited to that the last few years by Microsoft. So I'll probably be there. That's New York City in November. And then I will be at CES in January in Las Vegas. And this, I think this episode comes out either the week before or the week of a podcast movement. So if you're listening to this and it's the week of the 22nd, 23rd of July, 2018, and you're in Philadelphia either for the conference or because you live there, definitely shoot me an email and let me know. And uh, we'll meet up. My email is chuck at devchat.tv. But yeah, those are my picks. Tomek, if people want to see what you're working on these days or you know read your blog or anything like that, where do they go? Yeah, so first steps would be probably to my Twitter because that's where all the traffic goes goes through. So it's Twitter. My Twitter handle is S-U-L-C-O, Sulso. Mm -hmm. And I'm also publishing on Medium as a, a Tom Su, T-O-M-S-U. Yeah, so let's meet there. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. We'll go ahead and wrap this one up and we will catch everybody next week. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more. <laughs>